My boyfriend, M32, and I, F27, have been together for a year. He's only met my parents once over the holidays last year because they live pretty far away. They've been visiting this past week, and since he and I just moved in together they were excited to see our new place, and get to know my BF a little more. We have an extra bedroom, and this has become my boyfriend's gaming room for the most part, but we agreed when guests come over it would be a second bedroom. He really likes video games and anime in particular so he has a lot of toys and artwork that he's collected over the years from different games and such. One thing he has is this anime body pillow that features a sexy anime girl on it. He also has a mouse pad for his gaming computer that resembles a busty anime girl. Before my parents came over I asked him to take down his toys and stuff so they could be comfortable. I was upset to see that he left the body pillow and the mouse pad in place. I don't really feel comfortable with either item but he's really into anime so I've always kind of left it alone. But I absolutely didn't think it was appropriate to leave it in there when my parents would be staying over. I took the cover off the body pillow and put the pillow in the closet and I put the mouse pad in a drawer in our room. When my parents arrived and we showed them to their room, my BF noticed the missing pillow and mouse pad. Later, when we were in bed, he brought it up to me and asked why I hid them. I told him I didn't think my parents would feel comfortable with those things in the bedroom and when they leave we can put them back. My BF got really upset. He told me that he feels like I'm ashamed of his interest in anime. He said he spent his whole life feeling like people think he's weird for being into anime, and he didn't expect his own GF to be just like everyone else. The next day, I noticed him taking some of his manga books off our bookshelf and putting them into a box. I asked him why and he said something like, I'm putting them away so you don't have to look at them anymore. I feel really bad. I feel like I hurt him but I just really didn't think my parents would feel comfortable sleeping in a room with those items. But now he's just acting so distant and cold, and he's not really engaging with my parents at all. They keep asking me what's wrong and I don't know what to say. Am I the a-hole? Top comment. Commenter. There's a huge difference between anime slash video game decorations and sexualized anime content. A busted mouse pad and a sexy body pillow would most definitely make anyone feel uncomfortable. I get that it's his space too, but I think a small amount of compromise for a limited time isn't a problem at all. He might see it as you being embarrassed of his interests, but the reality is most people aren't comfortable with sexualized decor. It's not about anime at all. NTA, he really needs to have more consideration for others. OP, that's exactly my feelings too. There's other stuff in the room that's anime slash gaming related that was left up, but it was more the sexual stuff I didn't feel comfortable leaving out for my parents. Update 1. Edit. Thank you for all of the responses. And sorry it took me a few days to update, I was waiting for my parents to leave so I could talk to my boyfriend about all of this. I read through the comments, and it kind of validated something I already was feeling. Sexual decor aside, the way he acted the next day when he was putting the books away really bothered me. I ended up explaining the situation to my parents, and they weren't exactly thrilled by his reaction either. I got the feeling after this trip that they don't really approve of him, which is neither here nor there. I'm 27 and I'm old enough to make my own choices. But above everything else, my parents mean a lot to me, I never get to see them, and it was important to me that my BF would be present and treat them well while they were here. After they left, I drove them to the airport, BF refused to come. I came back from the airport and found a couple trash bags outside the door. Turns out that once I left, my BF started throwing all of his anime things into these bags. I asked why, and he said something along the same lines as before, that clearly his interests weren't welcome in my home and he'd keep them in his car until he figured out what to do with them. I kinda snapped. I'd been keeping it together all week for my parents, but I had enough at this point. I told him I never asked him to get rid of his anime stuff, just that it wasn't appropriate for my parents while they were staying with us. I told him this reaction is unfair, and he's being manipulative. I told him that this week was supposed to be about him getting to know my parents, but he was too fixated on this anime issue to even spend any real time with them. He then called me manipulative for making him believe that I was cool with his love for anime for the past year when I was clearly ashamed of it. He also said he didn't want to be a part of a family that doesn't appreciate anime. We went back and forth for a while, and then I told him we needed space. I wasn't even really planning that but it came out, and it felt like the right thing for me. Well, he then started crying a lot and apologizing and immediately tried to take back what he said, but I was just done at this point. He left eventually, and now I'm here in this apartment alone. Well in the mouse pad and body pillow, lol. He left those behind. Anyway. I don't really know if we're broken up officially or what but it seems to be heading that way. I'm just feeling awful and I almost wish this all happened before my parents visited because I feel like it tainted the whole trip. But yeah. Thanks for the replies guys and for helping me open my eyes a bit. Update 2. Okay. So things have been a little wild since my last update. First off, 
Thank you all for the support and advice. I didn't expect so many people to relate to this situation. After my BF left that night, I was feeling a mix of everything relief, confusion, guilt. The whole anime versus real life drama was exhausting. But more than that, it made me realize how much deeper this issue really goes. It wasn't about the body pillow or the mouse pad, it was about respect, communication, and whether we were truly compatible. So, here's what happened next. About three days after he left, he texted me asking to meet up. At first, I wasn't sure if I should respond. Part of me was still mad, and another part didn't want to deal with any more of his guilt tripping. But, I caved. We agreed to meet at a coffee shop near our apartment. I walk in and there he is, looking all disheveled and clearly emotional. He starts off by apologizing again, for the whole anime meltdown. But then, he drops this bomb. He's thinking about moving out. Like, permanently. He says he needs to figure out who he is without feeling judged by people who don't understand him. I was honestly floored. He'd been giving me the silent treatment for days, and now suddenly he's ready to just pack up and leave? I was torn between wanting to scream and wanting to cry. I told him that I never judged him for liking anime, but he kept insisting that I didn't get it. He said that ever since the whole pillow incident, he's been thinking about how different we are and how maybe we rushed into moving in together. Then, he said something I didn't expect. I need space to be who I am without compromise. Look, I know I said I was the one who suggested space, but I didn't mean it like this. It felt like he was trying to reframe this whole thing as a deeper issue than it was like somehow his identity was at stake because I asked him to put away a sexy pillow for one weekend. It was so dramatic that I almost laughed. Almost. At this point, I'm thinking, is this really about the pillow? Or is this about something bigger? So I asked him if he was really willing to throw away everything we've built together because of a few anime-themed items. His response? It's not just about the pillow. It's about being true to myself. Like dot what? I wish I was kidding. The whole thing felt like an overblown, anime-worthy plot twist where the character chooses honor and loyalty to his fandom over, you know, actual real-life relationships. But, whatever. I wasn't going to fight him on this anymore. If this was how he felt, then maybe this really wasn't meant to last. Here's where it gets even crazier though. As I'm processing all of this, he tells me that he's found a new place. A place where he can be himself. I kid you not. He actually said that, like some kind of protagonist in an existential anime. He found a group of guys he met on some anime forum and they're moving into a shared house. A house dedicated to anime and gaming. They're calling it the otaku house. It's like a frat house, but instead of beer pong, it's all about gaming marathons and walls plastered with anime posters. Apparently, they're even setting up a live stream studio to start making money off Twitch. He was so excited telling me about it that I barely recognized him. I was sitting there, in this tiny coffee shop, watching my boyfriend well, X basically choose this nerd commune over me. And I had no idea what to say. In the end, I didn't say much at all. I just told him I hoped he'd be happy and that I needed time to process everything. He left after a super awkward hug, and that was that. Now I'm here, alone in the apartment again. But this time it feels different. It's like I'm seeing everything through new eyes. The body pillow, the mouse pad, even the few remaining manga books he left behind it all just feels like echoes of something that wasn't really real. I'm still in shock. Part of me wonders if this whole thing is a joke. Like any minute now, he's going to realize how ridiculous this all sounds and come running back. But another part of me knows that's not going to happen. He's off to his otaku house adventure, and I'm here, trying to figure out how I missed the signs that we weren't as compatible as I thought. So... Yeah, that's where things stand now. We haven't officially broken up yet, but I think we're both moving in that direction. I just didn't expect it to happen like this. Update 3. So, after my last update, I thought the weirdness had peaked. Like, how do you top your boyfriend joining an anime commune? So, here's what went down this time. About a week after our coffee shop breakup because let's face it, that's basically what it was I got a text from one of his friends. Let's call him Jake. Now, Jake is a mutual friend who's always been pretty chill, but we don't talk much unless it's through my ex. So, I was confused when he messaged me out of nowhere. Jake, hey, just checking in. Are you okay? I blinked at my phone. Like, what does that even mean? Am I okay? I replied, telling him I was fine but asked why he was asking. And then dot, he drops this little bombshell. Jake, uh, well, have you seen the live streams? The live streams? I had no clue what he was talking about, so I asked him for more details. He sends me a link to a Twitch account. And guys, I swear, I was not prepared for what I saw. 
My ex, my former grown man of a boyfriend, has started some kind of anime lifestyle show with his new otaku house buddies. I'm talking full on cosplay, neon backdrops, and segments where they sit around discussing waifu culture and ranking anime characters by how dateable they are. But wait, it gets better, or worse, depending on how you look at it. Apparently, they're not just talking about anime on these streams. Oh no, they're also sharing stories about their personal lives, which includes wait for it details about our relationship. Like, cringe-inducing details. I'm sitting there, watching this dude talk about how I didn't understand him, how I was ashamed of his love for anime, and how I tried to make him choose between his passion and normie life. Normie life? Excuse me? I thought I was going to lose it right there. But the worst part? He wasn't just hinting at who I was. He literally mentioned me by name. And in case that wasn't bad enough, his otaku house buddies were eating it up, adding their two cents, talking about how they've all been oppressed by girlfriends who just didn't get the anime lifestyle. It was like a bizarre support group for dudes who think anime is their religion and relationships are just distractions from their true selves. I'm sitting there, watching this nonsense unfold, feeling both furious and like I've accidentally tuned into some parody of my life. But of course, my brain can't stop me, and I keep watching for way longer than I should. Eventually, I snapped out of my hate-watching spiral and realized I had to do something. I wasn't going to sit around and let this guy make me out to be the villain in his little anime fantasy saga. So, I decided to text him. I kept it calm, mostly, but I basically told him that talking about me on his Twitch stream without my consent was out of line. I also asked him to stop telling his otaku house followers that I oppressed his love of anime, because that's just ridiculous. You want to guess what his response was? It was like watching a slow motion car crash. He texted me back saying that he wasn't talking badly about me, he was just sharing his truth. He even threw in some nonsense about how people need to hear these kinds of stories because so many anime fans go through the same struggles in their relationships. The struggles dot of being asked to put a sexy anime pillow away for a weekend. I can't. At this point, I'm done trying to reason with him. Clearly, he's living in his own alternate universe where he's the hero, and I'm the evil girlfriend who dared to ask for a little decency. But the real kicker? He followed up with a request. A request. He asked me to be a guest on one of their live streams. Yeah, you read that right. He actually thought I would agree to hop on his weird anime talk show, sit there with his otaku house crew, and somehow defend myself or explain my side of things. Like it's a debate show about relationship ethics in anime land. I didn't even respond to that one. There's no way I'm getting dragged further into whatever this mess is. So now, I'm at a bit of a crossroads. On the one hand, I've been trying to move on from this whole situation, but on the other hand, He's out there painting me as this anime villain on the internet. Part of me wants to just let it go and let him have his little fantasy world, but another part of me is furious that he's trying to drag me into it publicly. For now, I'm just focusing on myself and my actual life. I'm not sure if I should confront him further or just let him live out his bizarre streaming career in peace. Either way, the relationship is officially dead in the water. I haven't heard from him since his Twitch invitation, and honestly, I hope it stays that way. I just never imagined a body pillow and a mouse pad could turn into dot this. But here we are. Update 4. So, after that whole Twitch stream debacle, I decided to fully disengage. I wasn't about to be a character in my ex's anime fever dream. I figured I could just block him, move on, and get back to my life. But, of course, nothing is ever that simple, right? A few days after I ghosted him, I got a DM. But not from my ex. No. This one came from someone I didn't recognize a girl named Mina. Turns out Mina was one of his otaku house roommates, and let me tell you, she had a lot to say. She started off super polite, saying she'd watched some of the streams and felt really uncomfortable about the way my ex was talking about me. She said she didn't think it was fair, and she thought I deserved to know some important things about him. At first, I thought this was some kind of weird trap, but curiosity got the better of me, and I asked her what she meant. And then she dropped the biggest bombshell of all. Apparently, my ex had been dating someone in the otaku house. Yep. He'd been seeing another girl, let's call her Tasha, since before I even drove my parents to the airport. The whole time he was crying about me, not understanding his anime passion. He was already lining things up with this new girl, who, according to Mina, was just as into the anime scene as he was. To say I was floored is an understatement. I wasn't even sad at this point I was angry, but more than that, I felt played. It was all starting to make sense. The sudden overreaction, the dramatic, I need space to be true to myself, speech, the whole otaku house nonsense, was his way of transitioning out of our relationship without having to look like the bad guy. 
Instead of owning up to what was really happening, he decided to throw a pity party for himself and make me feel guilty about asking for basic respect. And that's not even the worst part. Mina told me that Tasha wasn't just his new girlfriend. Oh no. She was also part of the reason he had started the whole otaku house project. Apparently, they'd been brainstorming this idea together for months, and the plan was always for them to live there and build this little anime empire. It was never about finding himself or staying true to his passions. It was about setting up this new life with Tasha while stringing me along until he was ready to make the move. I felt this cold wave of realization hit me. All the arguments, the silent treatment, the weird outbursts, wasn't just about anime or my parents or even the pillow. It was about him being too much of a coward to admit that he wanted out and was already building a life with someone else. At this point, I was furious. I had spent so much time feeling guilty, doubting myself, thinking I had somehow failed to be supportive enough of his interests. But the truth was, he was using me as a stepping stone to his next chapter. I immediately texted him, no more polite words, just pure anger. I told him I knew everything, called him out for lying and stringing me along, and told him that he should thank his lucky stars I didn't go scorched earth and expose him publicly on his precious Twitch stream. His response? Classic. He tried to deny it at first, but when I mentioned Mina by name, he backpedaled faster than I thought possible. He admitted it. All of it. The new girlfriend, the secret plans, the whole charade. But what really got me was how quickly he shifted to trying to justify it. He said things like, we grew apart, and I thought you'd be happier if I let you go. As if he'd done me some grand favor by sneaking around behind my back. It was pathetic. I felt no more connection to this guy. No more heartache, just disgust. I told him I was done with him, blocked his number, and deleted every trace of him from my life. The only things left were his mouse pad and body pillow, and let me tell you, they met a swift and satisfying end in the dumpster behind my apartment. As for Mina, she turned out to be a real one. Apparently, she had always been a bit skeptical of my ex's little anime martyr act and was tired of watching him manipulate people. After our conversation, she and a few of the other otaku house members confronted him and Tasha. From what I hear, the house is already starting to fall apart, and there's all kinds of drama brewing between them. Guess things don't always go as planned when you build your life on lies.